Hello. Hello, Mary? No, it's Roy. What? You're not Roy. It's Roy. What are you talking no, about? No, you are. I know. I said, are you Mary? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that was weird. Ashley, back off. Ashley asked me who it was. What? My daughter. My daughter asked me who I was talking to. Oh, man. Tell her to be quiet. Yeah, I left a note on your car. Quiet. <laughs> you said be quiet. Yeah, I got that note. How old is she? What happened? How old's your daughter? She's 11. Oh, okay. Well, never mind then. I guess that would be inappropriate for me to ask that. Okay. Yeah, I was underneath your car. I was <laughs> fixing something. And um, uh, you're not going to believe this. It, it's so st- I feel so stupid, but my car rolled into your van. Like, I left the parking brake off and when I w- while I was underneath your car, and, and my car rolled into your van. I've seen that. Okay. And I'm sorry. I, um, was, I looked at it yesterday. Yeah, yesterday morning. Yeah. And I'm sorry I took there so long to get back to you, because I, I, I was in jail. Oh, that's crappy. Yeah, yeah. Typical weekend, you know. I am sorry. I'm sorry. You, sorry. you said you looked at it. I had trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. There is a scratch on my van and a little dent on it. Like by the headlight? That's where I hit it. It's on the headlight. The headlight? Are you talking about the driver's side or the passenger side? More like the driver's side. But like my car no. bumped into it. I wasn't even in my car when it happened. I was underneath your van. Oh. And, and my you car- were underneath my van? Yeah, I was working on something. And, and my, I left the parking brake off, and it rolled into it, and, and then it made your van roll forward, and I think it might have hit something in, in front also. Like your van bumped into something. Uh, I don't know. So it might have got both the front and the back. I don't know. I, all I know is I didn't see any damage except for the side, but I don't think it hit the side. Oh, no. It was more just like the very back and... Yeah, my yeah. my car. I left it in gear and and turned on, so it just started driving itself forward. So really, I don't even know if I'm responsible technically because I wasn't driving and the you car. You said that you were under where? I was underneath your van, working on something. Why was you underneath my van? I was working on something. You were working on something underneath my van. Yeah. What were you it, working on under my van? <sighs> I don't really want to say, if you don't mind. I'll just, I'd rather... I really need you to say what you were doing under my van. I was fixing something. What were you fixing? Okay, I, I'm kind of a graffiti artist, and my thing, I like to be original. My thing is I like to get underneath the van and draw things with spray paint and Sharpies and sometimes even crayons. Mm-hmm. And I was drawing a picture of Dick Butt. Under my van. Yeah, on the bottom, like kind of where the, the uh, along the the tailpipe muffler thing, you know, the pipe. Why and would you draw on somebody else's van? But it, it's underneath. It's not like anyone can see it. But the point is, I'm an but artist, still. and I know it's there. And it just makes me happy to know that, like, I'm driving around, and every car in the neighborhood has my art underneath it. Well, I think that's destroying other people's property, don't you think? Well, you wouldn't even know about it if I hadn't said anything. You should get under and admire it. And, like, the thing is, like, someday if you're getting an oil change or you're getting work done, the mechanic will lift it up and yeah. he'll look under there and he'll just be like, wow, I'll look, this looks I'll look at really it. neat. Did you put your initials on there anyway? Yeah, I did, actually, on, on right in, on the bottom part of the art. All right. Well, thanks for telling me. I didn't see any damage on it. I thought but you said... please don't write on my van no more. I, wouldn't, I would never write on the van itself. I was writing on the bottom... Right. No, you said that you didn't hit the side of the van, just the back. Yeah, and it hit it pretty hard, though. There wasn't, like, any cracks or any. I thought I saw a crack. There is a crack in my bumper. Oh, no. But I wasn't driving That's the car. That's why I wanted to talk to you before I made a police report, which I didn't really see any significant damage, and I didn't make a police report. You did? I was kind of wanting to talk to you first. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you didn't. Because the van's not in my name. Whose name is it? The van is in my daughter's dad's name, and he wanted to come up here and find you. Well, it's not even your property, then. You can't can't tell me not to paint on it, not to spray paint it. And I'm driving it. It's in my possession. But I'm saying I don't think it's really my fault that I cracked the bumper because I wasn't in my car at the time. I was underneath the van, and and like I'm lucky right. to be alive. Well, thanks you're, for calling me. Your van. Not right on my van no more. Well, it's not even your van. It's your dad's daughter's whatever. It doesn't matter, dude. I know, you but you don't go around writing on people's cars. I, it's not that I just scribbled nonsense on it. It's art. 
I have nothing more to say. I'm like, you know, someday I'm going to be a famous artist, and she's gone. Hello? Hey, Mary. Um, what, The reason I was really calling those, I, I really think... I think that I'm going to sue you for attempted manslaughter because your van almost rolled over me. When my <laughs> car shouldn't have been under my van. It doesn't matter. The fact is that, that I was there. Oh, sue me, asshole. What? Don't call me an asshole. Hello? Hello? Hi, is this Roy Co. Trucking? Uh, no. No! No! Oh. Fuck you. Fuck you. How you doing? Shit, shit. I am the Easter Bunny. Shit, shit. Well, where, 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 no, you're not. Whoa. Shit, fuck. Because you're not? Fuck. Oh, Lord. You get off of my phone. My mother is retarded. Oh, I think. Yeah. <laughs> this is not acceptable. So Shit, fuck. Fuck you. 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 You get me a supervisor immediately. I don't give a shit what other people do. Well, 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 we know that that's not good business. You you bring it to our house. You throw the box on the side of the road. It's on the side of the road. No, side no. the road. What is this bullshit? I'm sick of your bullshit. I'm hanging up. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately. But thank, okay. Thank, thank, Sorry. Thank you. Thanks for being uh-huh. an unhelpful cunt. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Is Mary Brown? It's time to spend the Thanks, JD, for that intro song. That's a good one. You guys have made me so many amazing intro songs. If I don't play your intro song often enough, you should email me and yell at me about that and order me to play it. I try to cycle through everything, but Joe's stuff is so good, I just keep playing it. Anyway, hi, everybody. This is the Snowplow Show, and it's brought to you by JT, B.I. Eber for Life, Toiny Toiny, Alex S., and Tokius Pocus. Those are five of the many sponsors that support the show on patreon.com slash phone losers. I haven't mentioned the new signups in forever now. There's a bunch of them in here. I'm just going to read a couple. There's Sean P., Justin M., Eric M., Fluoride Man, Nick C., Zachary D., Eric J., D.S. Koopa, and Cheese and Beans, Colin, Monkey Haircut, and Moist Chungus. Hopefully I didn't give away your last name. Sorry if I did. There's some others, but I don't want to sit here and read new signups all day. We've got a show to do here. Uh, the Kickstarter. The Kickstarter. It is uh, finished. It it made its money. It actually made the exact same amount this year as it did last year. It was like 20 cents difference. Not exact, I guess, but you know, pretty weird that it's within just 20 or 30 cents. But the coins are funded. I've received proofs of the coins. You know, I had to approve them and say, yep, this looks great. And I will be paying them soon. I'm waiting for the Kickstarter money to come in, which I guess happens in less than a week, maybe. Maybe right at a week. I forget which day it ended on. But thanks, everybody, for supporting the coin project. I'm going to get all four types of medals and, you know, same thing as last year, basically. Just no lapel pins, I guess. But I'm going to order a bunch of stickers over the next week or two also. I've already gotten some pretty cool stickers. I got some holographic stickers that I'm not going to send to anybody until after the coins have been sent. So don't ask. I mean, you can ask, but I'm going to wait like a month and a half or so to send you any. So yeah, Kickstarter and, uh, you know, Airheads lapel pin. That's still going on. I feel like we've reached the goal a couple times and he just keeps raising the goal. The goal is now $1,000. Maybe if we raise 1000 he'll make the goal $2,000. But no, he said it it ends soon, or maybe it's ended already. Oh yeah, there it is, to the end of August. So I'm sure he's wrapping all that stuff up. Uh, I've been on a lot of shows this week. Um, What is today even? Uh, uh, Oh yeah, it's Wednesday. I haven't done a show yet this week. What's wrong with me? I'm sorry, everyone. I don't know what I've been doing. It's been a weird week. The sky's been blackened by ash from forest fires. It's like raining ash. I mean, snowing ash. But don't worry, I don't think the Situation Room is going to burn down. I'm just going to suffocate. That's all. Uh, but I was on Wasted's show. Wait, I think I was on Daisy's show on Monday. Daisy does a show every Monday. Maybe that was Sunday. I can't remember. But I was definitely on a Daisy show. Wait, that was last night, wasn't it? What day is it? Last night would have been Tuesday. So I was on Wasted's show this week for the whole three hours or maybe like two and a half hours or two. I don't remember. But they got to do a ding call. And I remember it being a pretty amusing ding call. I need to grab that off of their podcast feed and put that into a Dabalina show. 
And I need to play some here, too. I still haven't clipped those other ding calls from Devin and Dwight. Or, I mean, Dwight clipped his own, but I'll play it on the next Snowplow show, hopefully later this week. But I was on Wasted Show. I was on Dwight's show. I was on Dwight's show the past two weeks. Didn't do any ding calls because nobody's leaving ding notes. But we're getting plenty of ding chickens. So everyone's just saying that we should deem this chicken timber instead of ding timber. And that sounds great to me. Everyone just send chickens to the ding one. No, don't do that. Come on. Everyone's going to be mad at me for saying that now. I should just delete that. Don't do that. But leave some notes if you want to. You know, like go out and put some notes on cars. There's a website that tells you the phone numbers to leave and the names to leave and all that. It's very complicated this year. But if you go to worldofprankcalls.com, you'll see the notes and the numbers and all that stuff that you're supposed to leave on cars so that they will call various prank call hosts like Dwight and Daisy and Wolfleton and King Richard and, you know, just everybody except for me because I don't want to do Ding Timber. But Wasted tried to give me a Ding number last night on his show, but they didn't pick up, so God damn it. And I was also on Dragon Mirror's show, and whenever Daisy did a show last, I feel like that was last night, but it couldn't have been last night. Must have been Monday. Yeah, Daisy does her show on Monday. I thought she's quitting Mondays, but apparently not. Oh yeah, speaking of show schedules, uh, Crispy808 is now editing the show schedule on worldofprankcalls.com slash live shows, I think it is. Just go to worldofprankcalls.com and click on the live show schedule thing. And there's pretty much a show every day of the week if you want to go listen to a show. There's going to be one tonight by Devin in about, oh shit, 20 minutes. I need to wrap up this intro. I'm probably going to have to edit my show in one ear and listen to her show in the other. She does a show every Wednesday night. And you can find the link over at worldofprankcalls.com on the schedule thingy. This morning, I received a carding call number from Sagacious Zoo. He showed us the voicemails that this guy left a couple days ago. Said he would get around to calling him soon, but now it's like 10 days later or something. Fucking Sagacious Zoo. But no, I can't say anything because I did that all the time back when I did a lot of carding calls. I would just let them go for days and weeks and eventually they would Google the phone number and find out that it's a prank. And the number would be ruined. That's kind of what happened on this. So I'm basically playing these just for the voicemails. Because the voicemails are really funny. My call to this guy is not funny. I've already called him. I mean, it's fun to hear him react to the whole thing after he realizes it was a joke. But anyway, here is voicemail number one of five. This one is a minute long. I'm probably going to cut all of these down a little bit. Because each one gets a little bit longer. Uh, This is Larry. Um, You left a note on my car that you ding my car. What, what's all that about? I looked around it, but it's, you know, kind of dark out, so I really couldn't see. I'll obviously be able to see in the light tomorrow. Yeah. If you really dinged it. Um, uh, I, you know. Yeah, I should probably anyway, just end this. It's, it's, it's just him um, rambling. He said his thing. I, I, you know, like I said. I, but notice that he is a nice person right I now. I see any marks. Very nice. Again. It's kind of dark, so anyway. Yeah, just repeating yourself. We'll look at it tomorrow. And, uh. Yeah, okay, so. I don't know how you could have dinged it. It was parked. There wasn't a car parked near it, so. I don't know how you could have dinged it unless okay, you were. So, voicemail number two is 50 seconds long. Let's see where this one goes. Uh, you know, I don't know what your uh, message is about. You dinged my car, but, uh. If you're not, you know, why, why leave your phone number if you're not... Oh, and this is a day later. So the note was left like 10 days ago. This message is from nine days ago. I answer the damn phone. Okay. Uh, I know 520 is Arizona. I know that much. So I don't know if you're visiting here or... Uh, Zoo's number is in Arizona, by the way. He brags several times that he knows that 520 is in Arizona. This is some kind of a prank or a joke. You think this is funny? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. He's on to you. Uh, you know, my phone number is all over my car, so all you had to do is call me. Yeah. If you were in the parking lot and you think my car, you should have called me. 
My phone number is all over the car. Why is it all over the car? Anyway. Uh, oh, I know why it's on the car. He told me what he does for a living. Okay, there's a little bit left of that one. Let's just go on to the next one. This one is two minutes and 26 seconds long. I can't remember if this is one where he starts to get angry. Uh, Rusty, this is Larry. Um, you left a note on my car last night in the Kroger parking lot. Uh, you said, sorry, I dinged your car. Well, uh, Rusty, I hate to tell you this, but you more than dinged my car. Oh, shit. The undercarriage... Behind the front bumper, he found the damage. Um, this is gonna, you know, I had, <laughs> I just had that fixed a year ago on on another accident. I think you had it where fixed. A sign was laying in the road. But guess what? Um, anyway, uh, to re when they replace that, they 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 have to replace the entire bumper, the front bumper. Which is about a twenty seven hundred dollar, uh, <sighs> you know, yep. ding. So uh, I'm going to ask that you call me. You I tell hope Rusty. you have insurance. If you have insurance, it shouldn't be a problem. But um, you know, you leave me this note. I was in the store. Uh, my phone number is all over my car. God. Okay, you could have called me. Could have caught, I could have came out of the store. Every single one of his messages, like, at the halfway point, he just starts repeating himself. He's like, and to summarize. We could have taken care of this, but now here I am. I'm relegated to calling you. 520, I know, is an Arizona number. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you're visiting here or if you just if you just moved here or what. Yeah, you already covered this. I don't know this. how the heck you dinged my car when my car was sitting out in the middle of the parking lot. There wasn't another car around it. So, yeah, uh, so that's why he parked next to you, idiot. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to beg you to call me okay. so we can exchange information if you have insurance, hopefully you do. Uh it shouldn't be a problem, but uh, I think there was a better way to handle this, but uh, that's another story. So yeah. please call me another ASAP. Story. It's Sunday morning. Okay, that's enough of that one. Still another 20 seconds to go on that one. Voicemail number four. Another two and a half minute long one. Uh, I am cutting these down, by the way. So if they're less than two and a half minutes, you're welcome. Rusty, um, if that's your name, <laughs> uh, you know, the it's damage suspicious you everywhere now. Car to my car is more than just a ding. I need you to call me as soon as you get this message and we need to chat, okay? Hopefully you have insurance. Um, we live in a no-fault state here. I don't know if your your car, I see your phone number is 520. I happen to know that's uh, uh, Phoenix area. Is it? And... Um, I don't know if you're visiting here. I don't think that's or Phoenix. Or if you live here Isn't now or what the story is. Uh, but um, five two oh two you're not answering this phone call, this phone number. You're not answering. I know there are cameras everywhere in the parking lot at Kroger. <laughs> I know the owners of the shopping center. Kroger does not own that center. They're just merely a tenant. Better be careful. There are cameras the person that left this okay? note. I need you to call me. He's on to you. And let's talk about what happened last night, all he's, right? He's going to check those the, cameras. Uh, you know, if you're going to if you're going to try to dodge this or 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 just ignore it, it it will not go away, okay? Oh. Cuz there are plenty of resources it did uh, go available away. for me to He completely stopped calling for an entire week. He was done with it. To uh, you know, find, you know, to find you if, you know, whatever. I I don't know what happened there. I can't believe I mean, my car was parked. No one was parked around it. Nobody was near it. He's going to find so, you. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very curious as to what really happened there. So, Okay, and then the very last voicemail is this one. This one's a minute and 45 seconds. Yeah, hey, uh, Rusty, if that's your name. Um, I don't find any humor in this prank call nation. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be calling the state police He's and the us. FBI, okay? I'm going to give you 30 minutes. Uh, I'm going to give you 30 minutes to call me back, okay? You have my phone number, 200. I'm going to give you 30 minutes to call me back and explain to me 
what the hell's going on, okay? Yeah. Prank call nation, I see no humor in this, okay? If he found the website, then why does he need to have this explained to him? He knows what's going on at this point. I am going to call the state police, and I'm calling the FBI. They will find you, okay? In 30 okay? minutes. They will find you. The okay. FBI is going to drop everything and put their top men on it. Okay. I, I, have, uh, I, I went on the Internet, and I got all these, sorry, I dinged your car, prank yeah. call nation. Uh, <laughs> we will get you, okay? I'll give you 30 minutes. 30 minutes. It is like exactly 146. I'll give you 30 minutes. I'll give you till uh, 215, okay? 215. What a guy. To call me back, or else all hell is going to break loose, and you're not going to be a happy guy, okay? Because I am a real prick, okay? <laughs> I am a super prick, okay? He sounds like I it. see no humor in this, and uh, you're going to, you're going to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to prosecute you for this, okay? Everything in my power. I have lots of lawyers. You're fucked, okay? Rusty. So fucked. You better call me. I'll give you to two fifteen to call me back. So, as most of you've probably heard by this point, uh, he did call the FBI, and Sagacious Zoo is now in custody. Unfortunately, no, I'm kidding. The FBI was never called. I talked to the guy. Here is my call to him. And just to remind you, like I said before, don't get your hopes up on this one. It's not great. It's amusing, but it's not great. In my opinion, hopefully you guys like this. Larry. Hey, Larry. It's Rusty. Rusty, Rusty, Rusty. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah um, you called me, uh, I don't know, like 10 days ago. It's been a while. Been a little busy. Sorry. I didn't Help get... me out. Why did, I, why did I call so, you? I'm so sorry I didn't get to your call sooner. You know, like, there's one well, thing wait, after I another. Mean, 520, that's in uh, Arizona. Yeah, yeah. Not 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 Phoenix. Okay. I think it's like um, Rusty. Tucson or something. Oh! Now, <laughs> are you the guy that dinged my car? Yeah, that was me. Sorry about that. Um, well, you didn't really ding my car, correct? No, I'm a university student. It was a psychological experiment. We just wanted to see, uh, you know, see how progressively more insane your voicemail messages got. It's for my uh, it's for my classwork. That's all. Oh wow! Um, like I'm gonna play your voicemail messages for my whole class, my whole university psychology class. We're gonna. Oh play wow! Them. Did I turn you? Was, did I promise to turn you into the FBI? Or yeah, yeah. You said all kinds of crazy <laughs> things. They're gonna they're gonna analyze. Uh, you know, you, you, they're gonna be like, you know, this is one of those guys that thinks he's like more important than he is. He's like, oh, you messed with the, <laughs> you messed with the wrong guy. You thought you were well, just you, messing you, with I your mean, average schmo, but no, I'm big and important. That's what they're gonna <laughs> say about you. Well, that, that's not exactly. Uh, I mean, I, I, I am the kind of guy that would call the FBI. Um, really? But, Over a note yeah, on your well, windshield? I went online. I, mean, I went online and I found out who um, Prank America is or Prank Nation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I found out who Prank Nation was. Oh, and no. then I figured, okay, well, I, I called that number, and it goes to a, um, that number goes to a uh, a uh, medical building, a medical, uh, medical, like, sir. Yeah, um, the psychological department over at the hospital. I, I, I go to the university. I go to Davenport. Oh is, that, oh, is that University of of Arizona, or what is that? Yeah, Davenport, Arizona. Well, there you go. I went online and I found out. I I called the number. Somebody answered the phone, and I said, what? "Are what? You know what? What's going on here anyway?" And every you know, and she said, "I don't know anything about you know. I'm sorry, but you know." I said, "Okay." Well, then I I saw Prank America. As soon as I saw Prank America or Prank Nation, mm -hmm. um, I I said, "Okay, this is this is a joke." Well, I I looked at my car. I studied my car. I walked around it several times. And you know what's funny? What? Is you got me to, like, examine my car. I'm ready to turn it in. Actually, I had a three-year lease on it. I just extended it for six months. But you got me uh, examining my car, and I under the front right yeah, uh, you're checking fender out the, well. The undercarriage. Some, 
There was what? You're looking at the undercarriage or something. Yeah, I was looking at the undercarriage, and as it turns out, I had just had, I was in an accident last year, uh. and there was damage done, and I had that that whole front end is all brand new. Oh, the entire front end of the car is all brand new, twenty seven hundred worth. But I mean, I had insurance, but um, but it turns out that the work was shabby, was shoddy. And uh, and it was done at a dealer here that where I bought the car. You should call the FBI but, uh, on them. I, uh, <laughs> turns out you got me looking at the car, and lo and behold, the the work was shoddy. And I just took it to a guy down the street here that does that kind of shit like in his spare time, and uh, he he put it all back together with you know not, a few nuts and a few clips and a few this and that, and he put it back together. So God bless America. You know what? That's right. You, uh, your your little prank helped me out. Oh, that's great. I'm so happy to hear it. <laughs> this is going to be a, a nice little wrap up for my uh, psychology assignment. Uh, am I being? Am I being? Uh, what do you call it? Recorded? <laughs> yes, yes, you are. Without your permission. Oh no! <laughs> uh, state laws be damned. Well. I, I will tell you, uh, I'm a real estate broker. I've been in the business 38 years, so I'm 68 years old. Okay, and I and I can be a real, real bastard if I want to be. I can okay? tell. Oh my God, those messages. I, I, I'm the kind of guy that will call the FBI or call the state attorney general's how, office how or, or call or call the Arizona state attorney general. How many times have you called the FBI? Well, I have friends that work there, actually. Yeah, but. But for for crimes like you know you being I, a I've crime fighter, call, I've never had to call him. I I call the state attorney general generally. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I would I mean, call the state attorney general. I had I I I I went after some some goofs that uh, double charged me um, on a bill, and uh, they 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 drafted it the money out of my account because I I. I paid the bill. I I don't know how it. I forget now all the details. But I I called the attorney general's uh, office in Ohio, in the state of Ohio, uh-huh. and they uh, and they were uh, that's very, very um, helpful in getting all my money back. Oh, that's great! I'm so but, you happy. Yeah, I am to the hear. kind of I can be a real real. I I I honestly I yell and scream a lot on the phone, and uh, I'm a real estate broker. I sell industrial commercial real estate. I've never sold a house yeah. in my life, and uh, but uh, I can be a real bastard when yeah. I want to be. Yeah, the, and those messages you probably were great. heard some of that, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, those are going to be great. Like my a whole an entire class of teenagers are going to be laughing at you next week. <laughs> well, are you a are you a teacher or a student? Oh, I'm a I'm a student. Okay, I'm a sophomore. So you get university. together and share all your pranks or what? Yeah, well, no, it's just for psychology class. Uh, Prank Call Nation, okay. that, that's just a fake website we made for the uh, for the assignment to trick everyone into thinking that we're prank callers after they think that we ding their car. Uh, well, what was weird is my car, I mean, did, well, you you obviously stopped and put, hung your little note on my, on my door. Yeah, um, that was me. So what what brought you to Michigan? I mean, why were you here? Uh, just for the uh, the psychology experiment. They they said we had to go to Michigan for it. It's to social oh to social distance, you know. They sent us from oh, Arizona. Oh God! Yeah, it's well, it's so ridiculous. my car, you'll know, was parked way way. It was like ten fifteen. Uh, my car care. was way out in the in you know like I parked it way 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 away from everyone else. Way, I don't way, park way. my car near within. 30, 40, 50 feet of another car ever yeah. if I can avoid it. Yeah, someone might touch it. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you touch that's, it, I'll have to call sensible the damn behavior. attorney general's office. Yeah, yeah. That's and what have I, your hands removed. If, if, <laughs> if I had a lot of money, I would inconvenience myself by not parking near anybody. <laughs> that's exactly. You got oh, it, bro. So anyway, I got to go jack off now. I'm leaving. <laughs> Well, so I'm glad, you know what? I'm glad you called me and I'm glad you reached out. Yeah, I'm glad you have such a good sense of humor about it. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, you know, as it turns out, like I said, it, it was, it, it actually brought my attention to a problem under yeah, the, basic, under my basic, there. Basically, you owe me money now. 
I know. Send me the bill, okay? And we'll okay. have my accounting department take care of that. All right. I'll leave it on your windshield. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Right, Rusty. Is your name really Rusty? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Okay. Rusty Griswold. Okay. What is it? Uh, Rusty Griswold. Griswold. Oh, no. Yeah. The Griswolds. <laughs> yeah, well, c- come on. I get that my whole life. Don't make fun of me for that. <laughs> the Griswolds. That's hilarious. You okay. are a funny guy. You're, you're a funny boy. Yep. And All you're, right. You're, so, you're, uh, you're special. Good luck. Uh, I hope you uh, I hope you do well. And you, what are you trying to get a psychology degree or what? Are you going to be a doctor or are you going to be a psychologist or what? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm basically just in college to make my parents happy. I don't plan to do anything. <laughs> They're making me do this. Just prank, prank nation for a living. Yeah. That's what, that's my plan. <laughs> fuck, fuck the psychology <laughs> shit. All right. Hanging up. Bye. He just wanted to hang out and talk on the phone all day like a damn teenage girl. And now that I think about it, I should have tried to get him to start leaving notes on other people's cars. Because he said he's a realtor. He could leave notes on his co-workers' cars and stuff. You know, pay it forward. But I was really hoping he'd still be angry that we were trying to prank him. Or at least he'd try to tell me how dumb I am for not pranking him properly. But no, he just had to have a big old sense of humor about it. We have this uh, carding, um, what, what would it, like a group message thing between all of us prank call hosts where we just talk about the cardings and stuff. And they actually found this guy's Facebook or, or I don't know, LinkedIn maybe. They posted a couple of pictures of him. He looks like uh, just, I don't know, like a very humorless guy from the 1960s. He wears snazzy suits and hats and stuff while he sells his commercial real estate. And good for him finding the humor in all this after he sounded like he's super pissed. And Sagacious Zoo is still doing these, so please still leave him notes, as well as notes for everybody. You can find them on prankcallnation.com slash dingtimber. We had this uh, small issue where some of the numbers ended up on Google, because Google, they will now look at an image and translate all the words in the image into text for us. It's very nice of them, but makes our numbers end up on the internet, and that's not good, so... We did a thing to take them down, but there's still some of them that are still up. Some of them have disappeared. Kind of sucks, but, you know, we're still getting calls. Not everybody Googles the number, so that's good. I'm sure I will do better carding calls before the month is over. I was on a Wasted Memories show yesterday, and they tried some. I think they didn't get any to pick up. I mean, they got one before I called into their show. I was only on their show for the second couple of hours. And I think the guy also knew it was a prank, but it was still funny. Or wait, maybe I'm mistaken. I forget what happened, but I remember being amused by it. I gotta cut that out of their show and put it on a Dobelina show. I mean, that guy was one of those guys that parks way out in the parking lot and walks really far to the store because he doesn't want anyone to hit his precious car. He's got such a nice car that he can't possibly park next to any other car ever. That's gotta suck. I think we're going to do some requests now. I I, uh, just went to a random place in my request folder. I found one from about a year ago from an anonymous person, and he wants me to prank Lee. Lee works at Comcast. Maybe say you installed Comcast at my house. I was tagged. Oh, and I tagged your Comcast van while you were installing my internet. So it'd be like a car ding call, right? But I think he would probably know that I didn't tag his van. I was practicing my graffiti. I wanted to come clean with you. I could tell him I put it on the bottom of the van, like that one lady that one year. And oh man, I forgot about that call. I hope I can find that one today and make that the opening call on today's show. Hopefully you heard that one. I think that was from Brown Magic, maybe. That was a good carding call from a few years back. It says he also has many cats at his house, like nine of them. Mention you accidentally tagged one of his cats in my artistic climax. Okay. Hello, this is Lee. Hey, Lee. This is uh, Steve Dave from the Human Resources Department at Comcast. Yeah, what's up? Uh, not much. We got a complaint here about you that you um, you peed on a customer's car today. What? You know, they, they have Are one of those. Are you serious? They have security cameras, so they sent us the footage of you peeing on, the, on their door handle, on their car door. That's door. absolutely... <laughs> Absolutely no way that happened. Oh yeah, no. They they have a camera. They're they I I said pretty much the same thing to them, and they said the camera doesn't lie. And no, no, there's there's no way. What what address? Um. Well, you don't remember which one that you peed on a car door handle at? 
No. Look, I, I'll take care of this on my end. Just can you please not pee on cars when you're out there doing jobs? <laughs> this, this is ridiculous. What do you mean it's ridiculous? I, it's ridiculous that you're peeing on customers' cars. We can't have that. <laughs> who, who is this again? Uh, this is Steve Day from the Human Resources Department. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You, this, is, this is a joke. <laughs> it's a joke that you're peeing on her car door? Uh, and I'm not peeing on anybody's car door. Oh well, it's a little weird that a customer sent me a video of that. And it, sure. You can so you can you can send it to my supervisor then. Oh, your supervisor knows all about this. Uh, he said I should contact you directly. I'm sure he does. I but this conversation is over. You think it's over, or you hope? Did he say he hopes it's over? That sure didn't work out that well. Hopefully, whoever submitted that is still a listener today. Here's one from Eric. He says this video has gotten a lot of traction and now you have her phone number. Call and give her some shit. And it's a Facebook video. It's 19 seconds long. I remember watching this like a year ago and I tried to call this and I didn't get an answer. Take it home and put it in your trash. Who do you think's gonna pick it up here? So it's it's this this girl. Her name is Jordan or Jordan Ashley, I guess. And she's sitting in her car, I think in the back seat maybe no no no. she's in the front seat and this old lady she looks like she's i don't know 70s 80s she's up there she's got the white hair and those giant black sunglasses that old people wear and i guess jordan threw some trash out of her car so so the lady was handing her trash back nobody it just destroys the planet destroys you just open up my door Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. So awesome. That lady just opens her door and gives her her McDonald's bag back. And really, fuck this Jordan Ashley just throwing her McDonald's shit on the ground. I kind of agree with the old lady. But Eric wants me to call as Carol and say that you're the old lady that opened her door. I don't know if I can pull that off. Let's find out. Hey. Hello. Hey, put Jordan Ashley on the phone. Huh? I said put Jordan Ashley on the phone. Who well, Who are you? You called the wrong number. I didn't call no wrong number. I know Jordan Ashley is there. You put her on the phone. And... Right now. Hey, okay. I guess Jordan Ashley changed her number. Hello? I'll have you know, I have a camera phone, and I can see Jordan Ashley right there. Now he's just going to hang up on me every time. Maybe I should have called this one in 2018. Sorry about that, Eric. All right, here's three requests from Reggie sent to me in 2018. Uh, he gave me three different people's phone numbers. This first one is, they're all related to news stories. But I don't really want to read news stories because then you guys can easily track them down and you contact them and you tell them that they were on my show. I know what you people are like, so I'm, I, I don't know. I don't really want to read these stories. I'm sure you guys can look them up, but like this first one, the synopsis says they just had their 14th child, all of them boys. And I was just curious to see what their house looked like. So I Googled their address. They're not on street view, but I can see the top view. They're, they're like out in the boonies kind of but they have neighborhoods a little ways down the road that's so crazy 14 boys <laughs> what the hell you call them up and tell them how to use birth control the article starts out there will be no shortage of hand-me-downs for this kid <laughs> oh sorry they didn't do the laugh that was me but that's the news article these people have 14 kids all of them boys seems like a scam to me hello hi jay yes uh, it's uh, Steve Dave. I live down the street from you over on Hollow Ridge. Okay. Hey, um, one of your sons keeps coming over and writing wash me on my truck. Could you tell him to cut that out, please? One of my sons is doing... He, where do you live? He keeps writing wash me. You know, it's like just a little bit down 12 mile, and then you turn left, and there's Hollow Ridge Drive. We live a quarter of a mile back in the woods. Which I know. None of my boys go it's, down the driveway. How do you know it's him? Well, because it looks like one of them. It looks like something that would happen from from one of those kids. Can, can you just ask who, ask him to, to? Who is to, this? Who is this? Uh, this is Steve. What's your name? Steve Dave. I already told you that. I'm a neighbor. I just like he keeps writing it on my truck. 
right and wash me. And I know it needs washed, but that's not his place. None of my boys ever go down the driveway. It's not his place to tell me to wash my truck, sir. You might want to take a look, and before you call and accuse one of my kids or something, make sure you're you're talking about the right kid, all right? Listen here, pal. I have a ring no, doorbell. No, you listen here, pal. I'll be home in five minutes if you want to come and talk about it. No, I don't want to. I just tell your kids not to right wash me on my truck. I have a ring doorbell. Uh, I'll, sir, I'll I have do their that, picture. You fucking moron. What? <laughs> Called me a fucking moron. What the hell? I don't think I deserve that. Just didn't want to write and wash me on my truck. That's all. Next, we're going to try and call Clay. This guy is upset that a car cut in half but still able to be driven is on someone's private property. That sounds like another address that I need to look up immediately. But I'm looking on here. I do not see any half of cars anywhere in the satellite view or in the street view. So maybe they forced them to get rid of it. That's too bad. Is there? Can you do like a history on Google Street View or Google Maps? Is that a thing? Seems like it should be. Where do I find that? Hello. Hey, J- Jay. I mean Clay. Yeah. It, it it's it's Ray, your neighbor. Ray, my neighbor. Yeah, I live. Oh, across the street from me. Yeah. You're married. Oh, okay. Well, I, I... <laughs> okay. What? What are you laughing about? Well, I just did names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You call me Jay, and then Clay, and then you said you're Ray, and. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I I just I could I couldn't read like I yeah. I I oh, it's okay. Man. Yeah, I just I'm not very good at names. I'm not very good at names, Ray. Yeah. I didn't remember your name was Ray. It's okay. Anyway, can you stop writing can you stop writing wash me on the back of my car? I know it's you. I have one of those ring doorbells. I see you do it. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Can you please well, just... wait, wait, wait. What else was I doing? I did something else, you know. Oh, flatten your tires. Are you the one I flatten the tires on? Did did I call you and say you flattened my tires? No, I talked to you in the street. It's been a while back. You had to oh. flat tires in your truck and you're blaming me. Yeah. Oh, well, no, this oh. time I'm serious because you keep writing wash me on your truck oh. and it's very obviously you on the camera. I didn't wash, what, written wash me on the truck. Didn't write what? what do you, I, didn't wa- I didn't write wash me on your truck. No, wash me. Wash, you know, like clean. Yeah, I never did that on your truck. You're, you're saying like wash, like you know, like like as in like Washington D.C. You know, it's <laughs> still the same. Hey, no, I'm from the Midwest. How do you expect me to talk? I, I don't. I didn't ever do that to your truck. No, no, you like I, I, I'm sure it's you because I, I it's happened several times, and every time I look on the camera and it's you. Maybe you're sleepwalking. You come here late at night. And you're right. It, 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 <laughs> yeah, that must be what it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure if I slip and walk, my wife would say something. <laughs> what? The dogs would say something. Yeah, the dogs would say something? Oh, the dogs would let me know if I was, yeah. Oh, yeah, they'd make me take them outside so they could go potty. You can't get up at my house in the middle of the night without. That sounds you know, really irritating. I would probably get rid of my dogs. <laughs> well, you know. That's a good thought, but I'm not going to tell my wife that because she. Oh, put her on the phone. Agree. Put her on the phone. I'll, I'll take care of it. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm. Yeah, that, that could cause trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not holding. Let's do it. So. Anyway, did, did, yeah. Did somebody just, really. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really right. Yes, yeah, someone it's really not. did, and it, it was really you. I I have cameras. Just no, it's not. Please. Well, that's fine. Please. You show me the pictures, but it wasn't me because I'm just that's not something. I, I don't even do. want to hang out with you. I don't want to like sit there at a computer and go over a video, and it, it's just gonna be awkward when I prove that it's you anyway. Okay. Well, I'll, I, I won't do it again. How's that? I, even if I did it, I I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hey, if you want to, I tell you what. If it make you feel better, you can do it on my car because I never wore shoes. No, I'm not childish. <laughs> Really? Are you sure you talk to the right person? <laughs> well, I, I'm just saying I don't go around writing on neighbors' cars and disrespecting their property. I, I know you're giving I that that half of a car guy a bunch of shit. Oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, but and I know. didn't give him a bunch. Of, I didn't give him any. I didn't give him a hard time. I said move it and make it a dang pedestal if you want. Just get it out of the mud. Yeah, but you're a real dick about it. Well, you know, that's <laughs> that's what happens when you're on the city council. <laughs> Uh, of course you're on the city council. Okay, I'm so bored yeah. with this prank call that I'm going to hang up. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. Man, that was awful. I'm sorry about that one.
the article is gone on that one. I clicked on the article. He provided a link to every article, and that article does not exist. Finally, we have a number to call. Uh, this guy dresses up as a chicken to try and get people to stop speeding. And there's a linked article, and I must turn off my ad blocking software to read the article. Okay, I guess. Wow, look at that guy. He. He's holding a sign up that says, slow the cluck down, and he's in a chicken suit and has a pretend radar gun. It's primarily about the children. I do not want to see a child get hit here. Mm -hmm. uh, the chicken thing just kind of was a good excuse to be... Man in a chicken suit talking about children. Nothing concerning here. So he seems like he's just going to have a good sense of humor about whatever I bring at him. But I have three phone numbers for him, so I bet you he's going to pick up one of Call these. Call has been forwarded to an automated... Okay, it's not going to be that one. Hello? Hi, Logan? No, this isn't him. Oh, well, could you put him on? It's his neighbor. Uh, who, who are you asking for? Logan. Uh, what's last name? Are there multiple Logans there that I have to give you a last name? I don't know why you're being such a dick, Jesus. I don't know why you're being a dick. Just, ah! All right, let's call the last number, I guess. Is that Logan's son or something? Kid has an attitude on him. The number you have dialed is not in service. Oh, man. So I actually got to talk to that previous guy. Okay, I'll give him one more shot. Really, though, does it matter? Because I don't think Logan's going to care. Jake. Logan is not available. Oh, his name was Jake. And he said Logan's last name. Jake. And now he's not picking up. It's going straight to voicemail. I ruined my chance. Jake. One more try. Oh, that time he hung up on me. Now he's just picking up and hanging up. Darn it. Jake. All right, I guess I give up on that one. At least I got to talk to the other two. And one of them was sort of almost funny, kind of. Right? Sort of? Here's one from Franco. He wants me to call Dorothy. Act as if you are calling from a local museum and make a claim that these Halloween skull decorations that she's selling on Craigslist are actually real Aztec skulls from 2,000 years ago. I already prank called her as an employee at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, Illinois. However, I never broke character and told her to expect a follow-up call. This is from like a year ago, by the way, and the Craigslist ad that he provided the link... It is expired, so I can't look at it, but he did send me a picture of these really cool-looking Aztec skulls that she's selling. Feel free to make up a story about the skulls or force her into giving them back. I said my name was Roy when I called her, so I would go with Steve Dave or something. Okay. Sorry, Franco, that I waited a year for this. Oh. Hello? Hello, Dorothy? Yes? Oh my god, thank god you answered. Are, are, are you sitting down? Are you sitting down? Yes. Oh my god. Yes. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. Are, are you is do you, do you mind if I give you some news? Okay, who is this first of all? Uh this this, this is Jake from State Farm. Are you ready to save 30% on your car insurance? <laughs> you got me really good. <laughs> you know what? My husband we have USAA. Were you scared? <laughs> <laughs> what? I was amused. I was amused. Ah, oh, damn it! I didn't do a good enough job. You should be scared because you know that insurance company you yeah. use is a piece of shit. I'm actually working um, right now. What? <laughs> Who is this? Please? I said I'm working right now. Who is this, please? Ah, uh, what are you working on? I'm working for the census. Oh, okay. I thought you were like a hooker or something. No, not that kind of work. I'm too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, no, seriously, um, do you have some some conversation? Oh yeah, no, I, I'm actually calling. Call I'm calling from the M Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. Oh, uh, okay. it, appear, it appears you've been uh, selling Aztec skulls from two thousand years ago. Oh, oh no, no, somebody called me. Those are those are styrofoam Halloween decorations. Ma'am, we know an somebody Aztec skull. We know an Aztec skull when we I'm see sorry. one. I'm sorry. My GPS is talking. I'm sorry. What did you Tell say? your GPS in the background to shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay, no, seriously. I, no, those are just Halloween decorations. Yeah, okay? yeah. I, that's what you would say if you were actually selling Aztec skulls. You know, you can get a lot more money for those than just... Really? What yeah. you're, well, they're very light. <laughs> you know, 
I, you know, they're that's, styrofoam and they look really good, don't they? That's what schools and were they're like. they're all identical. So they would have been um, twins and what, I have, what, seven of them or something, yeah. Anyway, um, still how can I help you? you I Honestly, I have to, yeah, I do. You didn't get them sold last year? I had, well, I thought I'd sold them and then it fell through. Well, why are you selling real skulls? That's not cool. You know, those are those. I'm were, not selling real skulls. Those skulls were once somebody's mother. They were somebody's daughter. Hey, I would charge They're, a lot. I would charge a lot more if they were. Okay. Why don't you tell that guy in the background yeah, to shut the fuck up? I oh, was at the GPS again. I can't. Okay. Yeah. Is, is that yeah, that's GPS? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Your GPS is annoying. Turn off the sound. You really need the okay. sound. You know what? I'm working now. Okay. All okay. right. Fine. Now, um, yeah. there was a little young man who was annoying me over all this so um seriously do you have a, a interest in those or not no i don't have an interest I, I my i mean my interest is that you need to return them to the museum they belong in a museum oh okay i sure will i sure will all right i sure you know, will if, okay if, if, if you, all right if you'd play, play okay. ball with I us sure maybe will. we'll give you some money right. for them okay i gotta go sorry i'm working no Bye. don't don't hang Bye. up yet well i have to i'm working yeah why are you listening to me just hang up the phone idiot I could. I, I know, could. Why aren't you doing it? Nice you. Why aren't you doing it? Hang up. I will. Hang up the damn right. phone, lady. You have reached your destination. Oh, where you at? Where'd you get to? Dorothy. Don't worry about it, okay? Come on, where where you at? Are, are you, <laughs> where I need to be. Are, <laughs> so so like so like the, the marijuana Bye. shop? Lady's embarrassed to tell me where she arrived at. I'm not having the best of luck getting people to pick up today. So I'm kind of thinking I'm going to stop doing requests and I'm going to call off of a list. I mean, this is still request, but this is Frankie's list. The one that's really huge and I'm never going to finish up. I've been calling on it forever. There are 480 numbers still left on this thing. But I had such fun being a telemarketer with Dorothy that I thought it'd be fun to mislead other people into thinking that I'm a telemarketer. No, I mean, I, I want to be a telemarketer, but I want to be misleading at first just to get their attention. You know, this is going to be my telemarketing technique. Hello? Brad. Yes. Hey, it's your neighbor. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. How you doing? Not too bad. That's good to hear. Hey, you need to stop coming over to my house and write and wash me on my car. I do not. I don't uh. appreciate it. I think you have the wrong number, oh, man. Oh, I yeah, I figured you'd say that, but guess what? I have a ring doorbell, and I know it's you. Brad, who, what Brad are you trying to reach? Uh, the only Brad that's my neighbor that lives here on uh, Boulevard. Yeah, I've never done that. Uh, yes, you have, and I have you on camera, and I don't want to get ugly with this. I'm just saying maybe you should stay off my damn property. I don't know who this is. I I already told you. Uh, what's it's, your name? It's your neighbor. This is Steve Dave. The what? All right, I'll come clean with you. I'm actually a telemarketer. And did you know I can okay. save you 16% on your car insurance? No. Well, I can. Don't don't say it like that. I'm not a fucking idiot. I really can. All right. Well, unless you want to tell me who you are, I'm hanging up. No, I just told you I'm a telemarketer. What are you, stupid? Who do you work for? I, I just told you, State Farm Insurance. How do you State Farm? What do you mean, how am I State Farm? I already use State Farm. Oh, do you? Oh, man, I can't sell to you then. But I could upgrade your package, if you know what I mean. <sighs> Dude, I gotta go. No, Have no, no. Let, let's, let's check out your account. I bet you I can save you money. Even even though you're already with us. All right, we'll go ahead and do that. Quick, what's your policy number? Yeah, maybe this is just the dumbest idea ever. Hello, Sandra. Yes. It's Carol. Your neighbor. Carol. Yes, Carol. You need to tell those damn kids of yours to stay off my property. Ma'am, ma'am, I what? don't have any children. Oh. My children are like fifty years old. Ma'am, I don't I care. I don't, wrong... No, I, I, I live here on <laughs> Drive. I'm your neighbor. That's fine, but I don't have any young children. I, did I say well, young? Did I say it, uh, okay? Maybe it's your grandkids. I don't know. You need to keep them no, off my they, they property. It's not my children. I'm not sure. 
Why you think it's my children, hey. but it is not? Well, maybe it's your grandchildren. Look, it's it's nothing personal. Man, my grandchildren are hardly ever here, and they're just senior in high school. It, it's it's nothing personal, okay? It's just ma'am, it's you've for, got the wrong number, the wrong people, the Sandra, wrong family. Sandra, you just keep interrupting me. It's it's for insurance purposes, you know. Like I don't want anyone getting hurt on my property because I don't have property. What I'm trying to say is, you probably ought to call the people that are involved in this because it's not us. I know it's not you, and you know why I know that. Sandra? What? You, you know why I know that? Why? Because I'm not actually your neighbor. I'm I'm Carol. I'm with State Farm Insurance, and I'm calling to offer property insurance today. Do you have property insurance at your house? I was trying to transition into my sales pitch, and she just got all quiet on me. Hello? Hi, Emma. Yes? It's, it's Steve Dave. I'm your neighbor. Yeah. I, I have bad news. I'm I hate to tell you this, but uh I, I dinged your car. Uh like what's your address? I don't think so. Well I'm I'm down the street on hundred and sixty sixth. Oh you know the blue house? I'm just blue I'm house. I'm really sorry. I just I just kinda scraped it as I went by. I'm but I'm I'm in that big I, truck. My car's in the garage. My car is in the garage. I know. It has been all day. I know. I I have one of those uh, remotes. You know, it's like um, it's like a hacked remote, and it opens your garage door. And I accidentally scraped it as I went in. What? Emma, you... I'm I'm just I'm sorry. I I didn't mean to do this. I. You have the wrong number. Oh, I, I have. How how could you have scraped my car when it's been in my own garage all day? Well, I didn't necessarily say today. I just, if you were wondering who did that, it was. It was when me. did you do this? I I don't know. Do, do you have car insurance at least? What part of my car did you scrape? You know, I'm just trying to illustrate the fact that. Every family needs car insurance. I'm actually Steve Day from State Far. Okay, there they go again. I really need to work on these sales pitches. I'm not doing that great. Hello, Chris. Yes. Hey, it's uh, it's your neighbor, Steve. My neighbor, Steve. You know the blue house, like way. I I barely know you guys. I live here on Bel Air Drive, though. Okay. I accidentally dinged your car. You did. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Where was this at? You know, just out front. I just kept going. My car's not parked out front. <laughs> yeah, but it's you know I I went up in the drive I went up in the yard. <laughs> it's in the garage, so I don't know how you would have deemed it. <laughs> I, I went through the window. <laughs> there is no window. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come clean with you. I'm actually a telemarketer from State Farm Insurance. And I was wondering if you'd like to lower your monthly car insurance payments. So when people ding your car, you'll get more. Wait, is that how that works? <laughs> Why are you laughing so much for? You got a funny approach. I've never heard that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying new things today. I've been, I've been like calling up people and just like freaking out and panicking and being like, "Oh my god, are you sitting down?" And I get the, I get them all in a tizzy, and and they're all just about crying and everything. And I'm like, "Have you thought about how much you pay every month for car insurance?" And they just, they just hang up on me. I get your flyers. I have seen your name. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's going but, uh, Do you think it's going too far if if I tell someone that I accidentally ran over their their um their son with my car? Uh yeah. <laughs> you don't want to do that. But that'll get their attention and they probably won't hang up and maybe they'll buy insurance for me. Uh, okay. <laughs> hmm. I don't know if that'll do it or not. <laughs> All right. Well, that's what I'm going to try in this next one. Okay. <laughs> you want to listen and see if it works? Uh, no, but you can You can always call me back and let me know how that went. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know why you couldn't just stay on the line, but okay, I'll let you go. All right. 
Thanks. Love you. Bye. 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 <laughs> okay, we are now getting a call back. I don't know if it's from those previous people. State Farm, this is Jake. What? They hung up. Were they just confirming that I'm really a telemarketer? I should have answered like uh, like Royco Telemarketing. Can I help you? Hello. Hi. Is Joseph there? Who is this? Hey, don't talk to me like that. You put the man on the phone. Who is this? It, it, it's... Okay, my name's Steve Dave. I'm with True Green. We accidentally sprayed your lawn this week. We, we got the wrong address. What? We accidentally sprayed your lawn. I'm so sorry. There's no sign up. We don't put signs up anymore because of the pandemic. Oh, that's weird. What do you mean that's weird? My guy does. Oh, well, you... My guy puts up signs. I didn't even know you were with True Green, so you got double treatment. But we put grass killer on the lawn because that's what the neighbor wanted. Because they're, they're going to... He wanted what? Grass killer. They're doing landscaping. Grass killer? You put a grass killer on my lawn? I'm so sorry, ma'am. It was an accident. We They transposed some numbers on the address. It was like another one on Brushfield Lane. You know, ma'am, hello? Ma'am? What? Oh, I don't know. You just stopped talking. When were you here? Uh, they said they were there over the weekend. This is one of my employees. All right. No, nobody was here. Okay, ma'am. But here's the thing. I'm actually from Lawn Doctor. And you know what? We offer such a better treatment than True Green. Because Lawn Doctor would never do that to you. They would never put grass killer. Okay. It's like the telemarketing angle completely fucks it up. It's like when you tell someone you're a telemarketer, they suddenly don't want to talk to you for some reason. I don't understand. And I tried her back. She just keeps picking up and hanging up on me. Won't even put Joseph on. She's acting like she's the damn secretary. Hello. Hi, Jackie. Yes. Hello, it's uh, Steve Dave with True Green. We accidentally sprayed your lawn this week. Uh, they they got oh, the you did? yeah they got the addresses mixed up. It was somebody else there on North Seven Hundred East, and they went to your address instead. Oh, I've been home. I I haven't seen anyone here. Well, not today. It was like this within the past few days. Like I guess they were over there, and they just brought the truck into the wrong lawn. Sorry about oh. that. Okay. But they sprayed um, industrial strength grass killer. Have you noticed the grass starting to turn yellow yet? No. No, I, I haven't. Okay. Probably just because of the lack of the lack of rain. But yeah, once that gets down in there, it's going to it's gonna remove all the grass. They, they sprayed in, industrial grass killer on my lawn? Yes. I'm so sorry. Okay, um, well, one, my biggest concern, like, I'm super into, um, like, all natural, um, like, is that, like, the same stuff as, like, Roundup? Oh, no, True Green, they use um, strictly just, like, the most, po- I mean, it's it's got to kill the grass, so it's got to be, like, industrial strength poisonous type stuff. It's, it's, yeah. it's safe for you, it's just not for the, so much for the grass. Okay, I'm kind of having a, I'm okay. We're like super sensitive to chemicals though. Okay. So well, is I ha- it just my front lawn? I have good news for you then because you know who doesn't use the industrial strength uh, poisonous chemical stuff and uses all organic stuff? No. Lawn doctor. And that's actually who I'm calling from. I'm just a telemarketer. We didn't poison your lawn. We're just trying to sign up some new people for our lawn care service okay uh would you be interested in pretty stressful yeah but just think you don't have to deal with it now like it was stressful for a second but i gave you the gift of not having to deal with it by telling you it was a prank just a joke oh okay yeah it's just a telemarketing technique so so now you have good news your lawn's not going to die but lawn doctor can use organic materials to make your lawn perfect Okay. <laughs> well, no harsh chemicals. I, I, okay. Um. Okay. Well, I, I don't. 
I really don't want to spray anything on the lawn. So yeah, but this is organic <laughs> stuff. You know, it's it's truly organic. Okay. It's not, it's not going to kill your lawn like True Green. True Green. True Green uses harsh chemicals and industrial strength grass killer. And they have all these this genetic genetic mod, genetically modified stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Or they grow like corn stalks in your yard and stuff. Yeah. I yeah. Basically, a so, bunch of Satanists okay. over there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I'm not you know looking to improve our lawn. You know, at all right now. Really? Why? Have you just uh, given up on life? Do you hate yourself? Do you hate yourself or you just hate your lawn? No, I'm just, I don't know. I just don't really care about the lawn. I mean, I, I'm more, yeah. Basically, don't you don't have a good excuse. You're just like, eh, I don't need yeah. a nice lawn. I just, I'm just going to have a crappy lawn. All my neighbors are going to make fun of me. Yeah. Call me that, name. That's pretty and, much, yeah. Ooh, the, I'm fine with that. The gross lawn family over there. They probably don't even shower. Perhaps they might think that. So. Well, you don't want that. Well, yeah, I. But I, I'm not in the market right now for anything for the lawn. So. Okay, on a scale of one to ten, how stressed were you when I told you we killed your lawn? Uh, about a nine point five. Yeah. See. See, that's the kind of stuff True Green would do. We'd never do that to you. We'd never stress you out. Okay. Well, if I'm ever in the market. To do something with the lawn. I will remember Lawn Doctor. Yeah, Lawn Doctor. So, all right. Well, thank you for the Lawn call. Motherfucking Doctor. That's how you need. That's how you remember the name. You put the motherfucking in there. Oh my! Yeah. Well, I'm just <laughs> saying <laughs> that, that she did not like that. I guess I was trying to tell her you can't say true fucking green because that sounds stupid. But you know what doesn't sound stupid? Lawn fucking doctor. That's who I want to do business with when I get my lawn sprayed. I'm going to quit, you guys. I, I've, I've done the requests. I've done the telemarketing. I kind of want to do this telemarketing thing again, though, sometime. I know I always say that, and then I completely forget, and I never do it again. But I see potential in this. And if you have any ideas for other telemarketing-style things to do, like, I could call up mothers and tell them I'm with their school and their son just died during football or your husband's been in a massive car accident. I hope you guys know I'm kidding. I wouldn't say any of these things. And I didn't try the thing where I told a lady that I accidentally ran over her kid with my car to get her to buy better car insurance so her kid would be taken care of. Like, State Farm Insurance will take care of your kid even when someone else runs him over. It doesn't even have to be you. So yeah, help me come up with better ideas for that portion of it. And then I guess whoever I am, you know, as a telemarketer, that could just be related to whatever the opening bit is. I really like frantically asking, are you sitting down? Oh my God, you won't believe what just happened. But I wasn't getting the greatest responses to that today. So give me some ideas in the comments of the YouTube or the website or wherever you're listening to this at. Maybe not in the voicemails, you know, but anywhere else. Hey, this is Dan. I'm from South Florida. Hey, Dan. I was wondering, I'm new to podcast. How do I watch Patreon on, like, Stitcher? Maybe a stupid question, but I don't know. God, I forget such a, what you said. Such a I'll stupid do it. question. Explain stupid. it, please. God damn it. Thanks. Yeah, I'll explain Cactus. it. Okay. Uh, it, it's an app. You have to download the app, I assume. I mean, maybe you can go to their website. You know, just go to the webpage on your phone and you can listen to it that way but i would think the easiest way would be to download the app onto your phone it's called stitcher and it lets you listen to a bunch of different shows if you're a youtube listener you should think about using stitcher or tune in tune in is very similar i think they have their own app but yeah just get stitcher and then get on there and search for phone losers or i mean snowplow show and all of my other podcasts that you should already know the name of i'm not going to tell you this is Kai from Canada, hey, baby. and I really wanted to say thank you for keeping me company on my lunch breaks. Sure. I love listening to your show, especially when I'm drawing or eating or, you know, doing stuff like that. So I just wanted to say thank you. You're, you're so funny, and I, I love the show. Oh, so shucks. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I hope you're exposing your co-workers to it, assuming that's where you're having lunch. Hey, Brad, it's Mailer Damon. Um, I was listening to one of the voicemails and one of your callers had mentioned that the snowplowshow.com website is showing is not secure. Mm -hmm. um, you may have already found this out, but 
it's because you do not have oh, um, an SSL certificate on the site. I know this. Um, that is... I, I know, I need to get one because Chrome makes a big deal of it if you don't have a secure site now. I don't really feel like I need one on Snowplow Show because it's not like we're doing transactions over there. You're not logging into your accounts. It work is what I do for a living, so... Uh, yeah. You have my number. I, I, I know there's good reasons to have secure certificates and all that. I have them on phonelosers.com, mostly because that's where the paid stuff is for this show. Happy to do it for you for free, um, or at least point you in the right direction if you don't want to hand me the keys. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. You sound sketchy. I just to let you know that that's why it's showing up secure. I don't want you in my website. No, it's like, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean that. But seriously, I'm, I, I know they, they're, like, it, they make it really easy, the web host. I just have to click a thing, I think. And I don't think they charge for it. I get my secure certificate. Be like a real website. Hey, Brad. It's, it's Brendan from Facebook. I'm just... It's Saturday. It's Sunday night. I'm sitting in my Lexus just smoking some weed. And yeah. I just want to thank you, Brad, because, you know, you're, you know, we're retired. We know this. It's. I just want to thank you, bro, for... I ain't retired. You were my biggest role model growing Wait, did you call up, me retarded? I just want you to know that you personally touched me, man, and... I, no. That's priceless, bro. Don't spread rumors hey, like that. Anyway, I gotta finish this blind and fuck? get back to bed, bro. Hugs and kisses. Get back to bed yeah. in your Lexus. That makes sense. Hey, Brad, it's Brown Teresa from Buffalo, New York, and I just wanted to say that usually when you recommend or suggest another um, podcast show, I usually check them out, and because of you, I also love King Richard at Another Prank Call Show. This sounds like an advertisement. But I do not like Dwight, the janitor. Um, he comes of off course. very, very racist, and I'm brown, well, yeah. so I take major offense it's Dwight. to his racism. Every time I've tried to give him a chance, he says something totally racist. So I think you should stop promoting him on your show because what? I don't like him. All right, but I love well, you, Brad. You know what? Have a good one. Bye. I like Dwight. He's my favorite racist uncle. I don't think he's that racist, though, is he? He just says Indian things to Indian people. That's all. That's a tradition. Hey, Brad. This is Coleman from Portland. Hey. Um, I was just going to say, I uh, still listen to your show all the time, and I love you. And I just heard myself on your show when I was listening last night when I was driving home That's from Texas. That's crazy. And also, I just became a $20 Patreon, so you better motherfucker... You better make me a sponsor, goddammit. Okay, I will. Yeah, I love you, bye. I promise. Thanks for becoming a patron. Hey, Brad. This is a Fluoride Man. I called you once mm, before. Uh, just calling to let you know, uh, I'm going to sell Tom Servo out on the uh, Happy 9-11 voicemail. He also left another voicemail doing a really weird voice saying that he was me. So, um, yeah, I, I'm having no sympathy for him. And just, just letting you know, he clipped you saying Happy 9-11. And we were just, you know, listening to some weird stuff on Discord voicemail or Skype wars. or something. And uh, so that happened. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Real edgy of you, man. Yeah, take, take okay, that. Have a good day. Love Tom your show. Or was he talking about me? I don't know. I know I'm not going to play this other voicemail from him immediately after. That's not allowed. Hey, Roy. It's T Falcon here. And hey. I just wanted to say thank you for pranking my grandma. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I listened to it. I showed it to my grandma. And I showed it to my parents. They all thought it was hilarious. Oh, that's great. Um, just wondering. <laughs> uh, would it be okay? They must I, be used to your shit, you like, know? Clipped, just that clip and posted that on my YouTube. Oh, I yeah, mean, of course. Because it is my grandma after all. So. Yeah. I yeah. just thought I would ask for permission. You can put anything of mine on your YouTube. Just give me credit. I mean, you don't even have to give me credit. It's family stuff. It's just your grandma. Don't give me credit because then people will find you. Um, you don't want that. So, yeah, just wondering, wondering uh, about that. Of course. Um, also, the other thing is, is when you do um, Carol's voice and you just, and, it, <laughs> and you do the whole voice changer malfunction. And it just like glitches out to your voice. That is the funniest shit ever. Keep doing that. Yes. I laugh so hard. It confuses everybody at the system. I need to figure uh, out anyway. Bye, Brad. How to use the uh, the VT3 better to to do better voice glitching stuff or something? I don't know. I think you can. Can't you upload stuff to it 
or program it somehow. I, I've never hooked this thing up to USB. I don't know if there's software with it or something. I'm probably missing out on all the best stuff. But I know it does stuff like this. <laughs> That's what I should do to people. That'd be confusing. I should do the rest of the voicemails like that. Hey, Brad, it's Screw. So I still don't have any ideas for prank calls. Just want to let you know about that. But I did have an idea for something else. You should do another payphone show. That way, those of us who have payphones or access to payphones can call your payphone. And it'll be like, you know, all these payphones are pumping uglies with okay. your payphone. You know, then again... It's too we bad we can't hook up, like, video somehow to the payphones along with the phone call. So I can see you on your payphone talking to me on my payphone. Wouldn't that be amazing? If it was payphones only, it would be like a payphone orgy. I mean, just think of all the hot, wet coin return action. Yeah, I want to have a payphone anyway, orgy. I just want to let you know that. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay, Bye. I'll try and Bye. do a Bye. payphone show very soon. Should I do all these voicemails? No, I shouldn't do that because, you know, I have shit to do tonight. As in, I have to edit all night, probably till 2 in the morning, and try and get the show out before I go to bed. So I'm just going to end the show. Oh, wait, no. Let's listen to uh, Ruprecht real quick. This will be the last voicemail. All right. right. Jesus. Ruprecht Monkey Boy here. Yeah, so you're about 10, maybe 11 episodes away from the 666, and I'm calling out all the OG voicemailers. You know, uh, what, Crimson... With the Nagi guy, uh, Nagi guy, yeah, uh, shit, having brain farts like crazy. That's okay. What's the guy that always says, "Dear Brad," you know, all your OGs, man. Yeah, we, uh, that guy. We need to have our all, you know, our voicemails together for the big six six six. It's been a six 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 type of year, and we're gonna PALA it. That's all right. right. And as always, everybody, Ruprecht out, Ruprecht away. So I guess leave uh, satanic voicemails for the 666 show. That'll be fun having to organize those into a directory somewhere. But yeah, why not? Do that. Thanks, Ruprecht. I still don't know what I'm doing on the 666 show. I should get Liz back on here. We can call another church. It's been forever since I did a church. Hope you enjoyed this one, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks to the sponsors, JT, B.I. Eber for Life. You know, I heard Dwight say the name B.I. Eber for Life, and he calls it B.I. Eber for Life. He doesn't know how to pronounce B.I. Eber for Life's name, like I do. I never mispronounce anything. Uh, Toiny Toiny, Alex S., Tokius Pocus, they were nice enough to support the show on Patreon. All of them for quite a while now. Thanks, everybody. And if any of you would like to support the show, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash phone losers. And you get an extra show every week for that. Plus all of the previous weeks I've ever done an extra show. There's over 200 of them now. So what a great deal. All right, show's over. I love my... I love my... Grass killer? You put grass killer on my lawn?